Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, welcome back, a very good afternoon, good morning, uh, good evening to all of my dear friends and uh, students and viewers for this program. Uh, this is the investment analysis and portfolio management under the SWAM lecture series and as you know my name is Raghunandan Sengupta from the IME department at IIT Kanpur. So, in the last lecture which was the seventh one we were discussing the simple concepts of returns. 7th and the 6th uh, uh, in details and how we can use uh, the data from the NSC and the BSC that is National Stock Exchange and the Bombay Stock Exchange to formulate a simple portfolio considering you can find its returns, the variance actually it should be uh, said as standard error uh, for the because we are taking a sample and given the correlation coefficient how you can form the best portfolio depending on the risk return profile uh, which is required by the investor. So, this is the 8th lecture uh, as I said under the investment analysis and portfolio management series under the SWAM lecture series. So, we will continue the portfolio theory. Uh, going to more details about different other ways and methodologies of trying to formulate the portfolio of investment depending on different set of criteria. Obviously, criteria will change depending on the investor's perception. So, to kick start uh, this lecture, let us consider another very simple example. Uh, consider there are three scripts Reliance, ONGC, SBI from the NSC. And the time frame may be a little bit old, but the relevance of how you do the calculation remains the same. It is from 1st January 2016 um, of December 2016 and you will use the end of the day price. So, considering that there is an opening price, there is a maximum, minimum, closing price, volumes and all these things are also there, but that would not be required here. So, you consider the closing price as the best um, proxy or the best. Uh, price which, which uh, considers under it all the information which is flowing between uh, the buying and selling of that particular stock. So, based on that you can find out the minimum variance portfolio. Minimum variance portfolio is that point where uh, given the combination you reach that uh, portfolio depending on some combination of weights of this uh, assets such that you achieve minimum variance. And obviously, the returns would be calculated after you find out the minimum variance. You can find out the other portfolio also. So, if you remember when we were solving the simple Lagrangian, um, we had considered lambda and mu depending on the values of lambda mu uh, sigma as 1 or vice versa, you could get the minimum variance point and the other point. Uh, what is the other point? If you remember, we had discussed that it was that point where till that level the short selling was uh, not there and that is the tangent based on which the maximum um, this anticlockwise movement for the efficient frontier can be considered. And when I am talking about the movement in the anticlockwise direction of the efficient frontier, I am considering n number of risky assets plus the nth plus 1 being the risk free interest rate, because the risk free interest rate would be on the y axis considering standard deviation for that uh, risk free interest rate or so called asset if I consider that as the n plus 1 th asset is 0. You can draw the efficient frontier by considering different combinations of w 1, w 2 or w 3 depending on how many such um, assets are there. Here there are 3, so obviously combinations would be W1, W2, W3. One um, uh, known 
constraints corresponding to the weights would be sum is equal to 1. Whether you have short selling or not short selling that would be true. You can take the risk free interest rate considering the treasury bills of the government of India and based on that even though they are given not on an annual basis you can convert them to an annual basis continuous compounding and do the calculations accordingly. You can also consider the risk free interest rate to be there. So, in the initial case if you if you consider you have the um, uh, three risky assets and then you can consider the fourth one as the risk free interest rate and do the problem. Now, we will expand our uh, discussion that what are the other methodologies by which you can construct the efficient frontier. Now, the basic premise based on which you are going to do would be the fact that all investors, all decision makers want more. The more you give to him or her, they would definitely want more returns. And considering the risk profile, human beings would be always risk averse. Even though if you see the utility theory, people can be risk averse, risk lover and risk indifferent person depending on what is the risk profile, but we will consider that human beings are averse to risk. Based on that concept and considering the convex combination of different type of financial assets which are there n or n plus 1, the nth plus 1 again I am repeating is the risk free interest rate. So, what the are the different techniques? The, the background would be the uh, considering the ideas of non satiation and risk averseness. So, there are at five bullet points here if you can see in this slide, I will go one by one and discuss them intuitively. The first case being short selling, SSE short selling, short selling being allowed along with risk free lending borrowing possible. So, here when I am considering short selling is allowed, it will mean that the weights need not be always between 0 and 1, they can be negative weights depending on whether you have done short sell those assets and utilize um, to form immediately your portfolio. And when I mean this risk free interest rate capital R f, it can be also be re replaced by small r f. So, one is the rate of return, one is total return. So, the concept remains the same whether you use r f capital R f or small r f or you use capital R or small r. So, f suffix is for the risk free interest rate. The second would be short selling allowed, but riskless lending borrowing not permitted. So, you are not allowing riskless lending borrowing. That means, if you consider the idea that the nth plus 1 asset which was there uh, when you have the risk free lending borrowing is not being considered here in the second bullet point. The third one being short selling not being allowed that is it is being disallowed, but riskless lending borrowing is possible. The fourth one being here both short selling as well as riskless lending borrowing are disallowed. So, here it mentions the fourth bullet point short selling not allowed, riskless lending borrowing is also not possible. So, in the first case SS allowed, RF allowed, second case SS allowed, RF not allowed, third case SS not allowed, RF allowed, fourth case both of them not allowed and the last one is that if you have to add added constraints in order to find out the efficient frontier. So, let us consider the first point, what was the first bullet point? S is allowed, so I will just mark it in, in red and riskless lending borrowing being possible. So, even if the diagram um, looks simple, you can get lot of information from this. So, consider if if you are let, let us um, take the idea considering that you have consider the the, the uh, this one let me draw it first. So, consider this efficient frontier with n risky assets is given say for example, hypothetically is given. 
Now you consider the riskless lending borrowing at as any point here. So, this is the point which is marked where R f is the return and 0 is the standard deviation because it is riskless lending borrowing. Now, consider that you want to find out the combination of them. So, if you want to find out the combination what you do is that you start moving this ray or the line which means that I take ar arbitrarily a line like this even though the blue colors are different, but they mean the same thing. So, I start turning it counterclockwise. So, let me draw the counterclockwise concept as red. So, it moves like this. So, this is the counterclockwise movement. So, it starts moving. The moment it hits the boundary of that curve, which is tangent here, which I am I should use a different color. Let me use a green one. So, it is moment it is tangent here that point Q is basically the best combination of n number of risky assets and the line joining F to Q which is a straight line now which I am now marking in green in order to differentiate that this portion is that line where at point Q you invest all your money in this n number of risky assets. At point F, you invest all your money in the risk free um, investment that is put it in the bank and any combination in that between that line F and Q would mean that you are proportioning your money in some proportions in some ratio between F and the q, q is basically a basket of n uh, risky assets. So, if it is the midpoint which I am drawing here, so consider this is the midpoint. So, in the midpoint it will mean that I invest 50 percent of my money in the bank and 50 percent of my money in the combination of n risk asset which is basically a basket which is there. So, if you remember the one fund theorem, the two fund theorem it will make sense that q is now basically a basket a fund. So, if you move, move more towards q that means, you are slowly taking out your money from the bank investing more in q and if you are moving more towards f it means that you are doing just the opposite. Now, there is an added extension. So, consider these dotted lines, so which was in blue. So, if you move away from F, from Q, your the ray is uh, line is moving further towards uh, the right hand top corner. So, in that case, it will mean that you are short selling, short selling in the sense that you are borrowing from the bank and investing more into combinations of or increasing your stake or amount of investment in that basket which is Q. Obviously, you cannot go into the, the negative uh, direction of F which I am just marking. So, it will means that means you cannot sell and, and, and basically invest more in F. So, you are basically borrowing from the bank investing more into Q. So, further you go say for example, you have covered a distance of double of that from what is from F to Q it will mean that you have borrowed an amount of F 100 percent from them and invested that initial amount of 100 plus that 100 which you have borrowed into Q such that you are trying to basically do a combination of short selling. Short selling actually when you when I mean risk free interest rate is that if you are investing that means you are putting money in your account, if you are taking out money is basically or, or borrowing money obviously, it would mean a concept of short selling, but there is an added part which I will now discuss. So, let me remove it, remove this uh, coloring part. So, it will make sense and, and, and it, I will be better able to explain that. Technically, many of you may be thinking that what I am discussing about risk free interest rate does it remain the same for lending and borrowing? The answer is no. So, if you go to the bank and invest money, if you go to the bank and take a loan, the interest rates are different, remember that. 
So, if my amount if I lend to the bank which I have deposited that interest rate obviously depending on the demand and supply of money that would be lower than the, um, the interest rate which I pay to the bank when I borrow money. So, consider now there are two different risk free lending and borrowing. So, now the word of lending and borrowing is now making sense. So, let me mark them as uh, in brown color dark or uh, with dark red. So, this is one and this is the second one and let me mark as R 1 R F 1 which is basically the amount which I get when I uh, borrow the money uh, or when I deposit the money in the bank and this one is basically R F 2 which is interest that I need to pay. Now, if you consider similar concept I I have rays going out and I turn counterclockwise. So, that will give you a unique idea how the overall efficient frontal looks. In the initial case, when we have only one risk free lending and borrowing, the actual line which I did mention was F to Q considering no short selling and you extend that in the dotted line, there is short selling. But now what had happened? So, let me draw the first one. So, when I take the tangent, so this dotted line does not mean it is short selling, I am just my nomenclature how I am drawing it. So, I drew it in order that it can be made smooth without. So, consider this point as Q 1. So, Q 1 is corresponding to R F 1 and considering R F 2, you will basically have this Q 2. So, now what happens to the efficient frontier? The efficient frontier would be like this. So, I will just use the highlighter to mark it and let us use the color C for example, orange one. So, your efficient frontier now is R F 1 till Q 1 straight line, then it becomes a curve between Q 1 and Q 2, then again it is basically a straight line. So, actually considering different combinations of riskless lending and borrowing and, and if the demand and supply of money is, uh, is huge that means, both match each other um, quite closely. In that case, the difference between R F 1 and R F 2 will decrease. That means, they will become difference because the mo moment I go to the bank and lend or deposit and uh, or I go and, and withdraw money and if the de demand and supply of money is good, then obviously, the difference in R F 1 and R F 2 would become 0. So, in that case again you get the straight line. More the difference. So, if say for example, R F 1 is here, let me draw a different R F 1, let me mark it as R F 3. So, if I use R F 3, here is R F 3 and consider the other part remains as R F 2. So, your general initial part of the line which I have from R F 3 would be this one. So, this becomes Q 3. So, in that case if I want to find out the efficient frontier, it goes from R F 3 to Q 3, this is the Q 3 1. Then the curve starts from Q 3, goes to Q 2 and goes further on as a straight line. So, obviously, after that Q 2 point, you have short selling. So, you can basically combine them in different ways to find it. 
and finding the solution you have very simple techniques which you have already discussed this simple optimization you can solve it. So, this was the discussion with short selling being allowed and lending borrowing being possible. I did spend a little bit more time here, so, but I thought I should explain with a graphical connotation which will make much better sense. So, if you see it would definitely be much easier for all of you to appreciate and also for me to explain the details. So, let me erase this one. So, let me come to the second point. So, here before coming to the second point whatever I explain I will just read it out in a very very short form. For short selling allowed along with RF lending borrowing possible we should have ray a straight line such that it is furthest in the counterclockwise direction. The efficient frontier is the entire length of the ray extending from F to Q provided short selling is not there. Different point of the line depends different amounts of risk less lending and borrowing in combination with the optimum portfolio of risk asset. Optimum portfolio of risk asset is basically Q. So, you are taking some amount from Q and you are saying at a, some amount and depending on the amount of investment and investing some in the risk free lending borrowing. So, I consider them as W1, W2 weights and W2 is in Q such that it can be further analyzed that out of that W2 what is the proportions you are investing in that different type of combinations of n number of risky assets. So, thus now if you consider the line which is being rotated counterclockwise the moment it hits. So, let me draw this one rather than going back to the slide let me draw this portion here I will use black color for the y axis and x axis you have the efficient frontier given as here. I am not marking what is there in, in y axis, what is in there in x axis, you all know. And this is the counterclockwise movement for which this is the counterclockwise movement, I will use a different color. So, this is the efficient frontier which you have, this is basically Q. So, I moved accordingly in the counterclockwise direction also let me use this moving in this direction, it moved in that direction. And this point to make things simple was R f, this point has R q comma sigma q, sigma q is the standard deviation for that point q. So, we all know. So even though I did mention it is clear, but still I will make it better. So, this is R which is the return, this is basically sigma which is the standard deviation. Now, let us see that what does this maximization of theta mean. So, if you consider the triangle, I will use the green color here, triangle being this one you draw a vertical drop horizontal going here. So, this is point which I have consider this point is say for example, B and this angle is theta. So, tan of theta would basically be the height Q B which is equal to R Q minus R F the bar actually obviously it means the mean value. So, here this this height which is in the numerator would basically mean the length of q b and the base which you have which is r f to b is basically sigma suffix q which is basically r f minus b minus not till b. So, this is the length which I am considering l is the length remember. Now, I want to maximize because why? Because that is the point theta for which you will maximize. So, maximizing tan um, of theta is will be equivalent to maximizing theta because tan is increasing from 0 to infinity. And there is a constraint. So, obviously, the constraint is the weights add up to 1. When I mean the weights add up to 1, even though I have written as n, technically 
it would be weight starting from 1 till n. So, these are the n number of uh, risky assets and obviously, you would also have which I will use a different color you will have the weights which you are trying to invest in the risk free lending borrowing. So, technically the weight of all this combination should always be 1 as it should be. So, if n is 3, so you will 3 plus 1 the fourth one being the risk free lending borrowing. There are two solution methods one is the using the Lagrangian we will discuss that only to solve the problem. So, we had the pictorial one is done was done in the last slide here is the basically simple mathematical way of denoting. So, I have expanded the equation the numerator actually which I when I mean are the values of difference between q and b the height. So, that was basically r q minus r f. Now, what is r q? I am just expanding it r q is equal to w i where i is equal to 1 to n this n is the number of risk assets into r i for each one there would be a bar bar means the average and obviously r f can also be written as this. So, they add up to 1 summation of w 1 to so, I take the summation outside. So, when the moment I do that I get this formula which is summation i is equal to 1 to n, n is the number of risk assets remember uh, sorry I am repeating it time and again, but please bear with me w i minus r i bar minus r f and r, r f is constant remember. So, you find out the difference between r i minus r f multiply with the corresponding weights and obviously, weights you have to find out when you do the optimization that goes in the numerator. In the denominator we know sigma b or sigma q sorry is basically the, the um, standard deviation of the point q. So, b is basically the square root of w i w j into sigma i j. Sigma i j is basically the covariance existing between the ith and the jth one. Here i is equal to 1, j is equal to 1 to n. n again just for clarity n is the number of risky assets and obviously, this w sum of is equal to 1 remains as true. Only remember when you are basically combining the portfolio n number of assets and the nth plus 1 then only actually the summation is from 1 to n plus 1 only if you are concentrating on q then it is 1 to n. So, the I am going back to the last slide because I thought I should make it clear. So, in this formula let me highlight it in this formula which you have even though I have written w 1 till w n plus w r f is equal to 1 when you are optimizing only on point q remember it is basically sum of w 1 to w n. When you expand the overall consideration considering the nth plus 1 then actually w 1 to w n has been replaced by a new weight because we are now investing some proportion in, in the risk free interest rate and the other proportion 1 minus that into the risky assets. So, depending on the context the sum should be 1. Now, let us consider the solution Lagrangian very simple solution. So, Lagrangian you know you uh, partially differentiate the combination function of the objective function with the constraint and uh, put partially different with respect to all the decision variables and obviously, when you consider the decision variables the Lagrangian multipliers are also there a very simple and, 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 and efficient technique in optimization. When you put it to 0 each term put to 0 you have a set of equations. So, if there are 
three decision variables and two uh, two um, um, Lagrangian constraints, technically you will have five partial equations equated to 0. When you solve them, you will have basically five equations, five variable decision variables, simple equations, solve them, linear equations and you get the answer. So, either you can use a piece of paper and pencil or you can use the Gauss Jordan method, which is a very fantastic technique in, in mathematics in matrix multiplication and you solve the problem. So, without going to the details, because actually we need to solve the problem. Let us come back to the solution. So, once you differentiate that, now the actual solution becomes this. So, you have differentiated that and equated. Now, considering there are k number of equations, because k um, n number of equations where k is equal to 1 to n and this n number of equations are corresponding to this n number of such risky assets which you have. So, the equation when you solve is this. So, you may be thinking why sigma is not square because once you consider that different and, and weights are not there. So, sigma is not square because you are considering the, the covariance values. Covariance values we know is this. So, so, you have the correlation coefficient between i and j, the standard deviation for i, standard deviation of j and the actual value is the covariance existing between the ith and jth one. So, technically sigma k g is that. Now, you may be thinking, so uh, to illustrate that, if you see this equation, you have basically a square w 1 into w j, which is a square term. Now, the weights are decision variable. So, when you partially differentiate that, so x square differentiated with respect to x becomes 2 x. That is why you have this and this value of 2 basically gets whether you consider that or not. If you remember in, in the variance covariance matrix, the principal diagonal is basically the covariance of a particular random variable with itself, which is basically the variance happening. Because each principal diagonal values are actually, if I consider the first one, it is rho 1 1, i i is 1 1 into sigma i into sigma i, because i and g are same. So, in that case, it becomes sigma i square. So, i is equal to 1 is the first element, 1 comma 1, then sigma 2 square is 2 comma 2, sigma 3 square is 3 comma 3 and so on and so forth for all the principal diagonal. And the of the diagonal alignment, they are the covariances between the ith and the jth one. So, once you differentiate that and find out these values, the equation basically comes out to be this. Now, here there is some interesting thing. If you pay attention to this, this equation, which I am just putting a tick mark in black, is a linear equation. So, on the left hand side, so obviously you will have such n number of equations, because there are n number of decision variables. On the left hand side, you have summation w star or dash j. Now, there is an implication of w um, dash j. w dash j into sigma k j, which is the variance covariance values is equal to r bar k minus a r f, which is the excess return, whether positive or negative that is a different question excess return of the kth um, financial asset over the risk free interest rate. So, if I have that, I will basically have such n number of equations, n number of decision variables, solve them and get the answer. Now, this w dash is basically the weight which, which you need to find out, but remember when you solve the problem, 
the weights need not add up to 1 even though you do not have any short selling. So, that means you have to normalize the weights and find out. So, that is what is given here. I just marked it with a box with the red color uh, black one. So, let me hash it now. So, this is the normalized weights you have to find out. So, normalize using the simple concept of w i is equal to w dash divided by summation of this w dash and that obviously would add up to 1. So, now we need to consider the problem in a simple way. Again I am mentioning it is a Lagrangian multiple problem methodology. You have n number of equations, n number of decision variables, all the decision variables are the weights we need to find out. Considering this very simple problem, hypothetical, hypothetical values, but it will give you an idea. There are three assets, obviously, it can be increased to more than three assets, but to solve it, I took it. There are three assets and their covariances and returns are given. So, if I consider which I am just marking in green, these values are basically the covariances values for variance covariance values for these three assets. And this one, which I am just marking here, 14, 8, and 20 other returns. Forget about the units. So, you can replace in the units and do the problem in the similar way, but it is mainly to make you understand how the problem is to be solved. You want to find out the optimum portfolio thus formed. So, if I go back to the actual formula, so with your due permission, I will go back to the 10th slide. So, this was the equation. So, I will just in order to make it, I will just hash it with red without overwriting anything. So, this is the equation I will use. So, there are three stocks, three scripts, three decision variables, three equations. What are these? Let me expand, then put the value. So, if you consider the right hand side, the first one is R i bar R i R 1 bar minus R f. And on the left hand side, you have basically w 1. So, because k is equal to 1, so it is basically w 1 dash. So, I may be omitting the dash, but their dash which basically means the non normalized weights w 1 dash into. So, this is the first one. So, it will be rho 1 1 sigma 1 sigma 1. So, hence it becomes the variance of the first. Next would be if you are moving. Um, row wise, row wise means I am moving in this direction here, first equation, second equation I am marking with two arrows, third equation I am marking with three arrows. So, I will consider these equations accordingly, w 2 dash sigma 1 2 because that is the covariance between first and second then the plus w 3 dash sigma 1 3. So, this is equation 1 and the unknowns for this equation, which I will mark in, in uh, yellow is basically w 1 dash w 2 dash w 3 dash. So, first equation done. Then I go in the second one, second row w 1 dash. Now, it is sigma 2 1 because it is basically the first element on the second row, which is the covariance between the first and the second or the second and the first, whichever you denote plus w 2 dash sigma 2 square plus w 3 dash into sigma 2 3. So, this is the second equation. So, I have now two equations. Let me check what are the variables. They are the same w 1 dash w 2 dash w 3 dash. Similarly, when I go to the third row, the third equation will come out and again the variables which you find out which are still there which you need to be solved is w 1 dash w 2 dash w 3 dash. So, three equations three unknowns and just for your information even though that is absolutely clear to you that the principal diagonal values would come here which are this I am marking circling with blue. These are the variances of first, second, and third, and the off the diagonal elements. If I consider a combination of silver and violet color to make understand, so sigma two one, sigma one two. 
they go hand in hand. Similarly, is 3 1 and th 1 3. They go hand in hand in hand means they are the covariance of 1 2 3 3 2 1. And this is the one. So, I now I use the values. So, if you remember the risk free interest rate given in the problem was 5, the values of the returns were 14, 8, 20 units again I am saying that I am not considering and the variance covariance values were given as 36, 9, 36 if you go row wise 9, 9, 9, 36, 9, 225. I just repeated so I am replacing that in the equations. So, I will use the same coloring scheme to mark the equation. This is the first equation. So, 14 minus 5 is R 1 bar minus R f W 1 bar or dash into sigma 1 square, sigma 1 square is 36, I mark it with red W 2 into sigma 1 2 which is 9 W 3 this should be W 3 dash my apologies. So, I should change it. this is W 3 and the value of sigma 1 3 is 36. Similarly, when I come to equation number 2 w 1 dash into 9, 9 is basically here sigma 2 1 or 1 2 w 2 dash into 9, this in the second 9 is basically the variance of the second um, stock or the script w th dash 3 into 9 which is the third one. So, just to make things most clear these are the values if you remember 9 9 9 then is 36 9 and 25. W 1 dash into 36 plus W 2 dash into 9 plus W 3 dash into 225. So, these values go so called hand in hand means they are sig um, covariances of 1 to 2, 2 to 1 so on and so forth. Similarly here, so this is three third equation, three questions, three unknowns, solve them. Once you solve them, the values which I find out I am marking in blue is 14 by 63, 1 by 63, 3 by 63, add them up they do not add up to 1. So, I normalize them, once I normalize, I use the same normalization concept which I have considered that means w is equal to w with the suffix so it add, add up to 1. So, now if you see I will use the violet color here 14 by 18, 1 by 18, 3 by 18 that means I am investing 14 by 18 percentage or ratio in my first stock, 1 by 18 in the second stock, 3 by 18 in the third stock, double check they add up to 1. Now, the point is that I found out what is this? This is the point of Q. So, if you remember in this case when you are investing, you are investing in if I go back to the, the slide. So, this is too congested I will go back to the slides accordingly here. here. So, I have found out this point, this R f is already known 5 percent join them and you get the efficient frontier. Now, you will ask that what do I invest? So, that will depend on your risk return profile. So, if you want to invest everything in, in your money in Q, so you will invest in that proportion as found out W 1, W 2, W 3. If you want to invest everything in RF, put everything in the bank at 5 percent. If you want to apportion your money in total amount, you will basically have 100 rupees, 50 rupees in the bank, 50 rupees in Q and that proportion uh, of that 50 rupees what you will invest in Q is has already been found out by these ratios 14 by 8, 1 by 8, 14 by 18, 1 by 18 and 3 by 18. So, out of the 50 rupees you will invest in this proportion. Now, let us come back to the point where short selling is allowed, I will just mark it in, in yellow and lending borrowing not possible, it is not allowed which means immediately will give you the information that come what may 
I will only have n number of risk assets, nth plus 1 does not exist. So, if I go back to the actual concept, I can find out the actual like a simple optimization problem of trying to basically maximize the return based on some constraint, minimize the risk based on some constraint, I can find it out. But let us try to solve the problem in a different way. Consider before that the same similar concept which I used that means drawing the anti going at anti clockwise marking Q point or you have different type of uh, riskless lending borrowing RF 1, RF 2, RF 3 whatever you basically uh, from each point you draw a ray, turn it anti clockwise, find out those points Q 1, Q 2, Q 3 and draw it accordingly. So, in case riskless lending borrowing are different then obviously, the, uh, the efficient frontier is not a straight line as it was between f and q. That means, there is only one risk plus lending borrowing. So, let us utilize the same concept to find out the efficient frontier with only n number of risky assets. The storyline is the same. First, consider the efficient frontier hypothetically given. So, I, I did mention that that uh, you may be thinking that I am considering the hypothetical um, efficient frontier when, when if it is not there how would you find out. It does not matter because if you have solved the problem if you remember the actual that was pictorially drawn to give you the, the idea that how you will visualize this, but when you solve it you solve it using simple maximization of theta or tan theta that was height by base. So, there you do not need to basically draw the diagram, only find out the, the values of w's and w's are basically found out because this r 1 bar till r n bar are already given because you know what stocks are there for, for from which you will formulate. R f is also, also there, find out the difference between r q minus r f, r q bar minus r f divided by sigma q and you have already solved it. So, irrespective of whether you have drawn the hypothetical curve or not drawn the hypothetical curve that would not basically make any difference, you are just solving the problem. So, we continue using the same concept, but underlying fact is that is just uh, mentioned in order to make things a little bit more visually appealing. So, consider this, this yellow line which I draw is basically the so called hypothetical curve which is when n number of risk assets are there. Now, let us draw it like this. You take different values of riskless lending borrowing like R f 1, R f 2, R f 3, so on and so forth. And for each case you solve the problem and find out q 1, q 2, q 3, q 4. So, what I am doing is like this. For the first point, so let me use a different color that will make better sense. So, consider F 3, you have drawn the tangent and consider this is Q 3. So, when I do that the line is this, the triangle, this is theta 3 because 3 is the suffix, so it will be better. So, maximizing theta 3 will be equal to r bar q 3 minus r f 3 divided by sigma q 3. Solve it and same solution what we did that w 1 dash w 1 so on and so forth. So, we will find out the sets of points w 1 comma 3 is basically means considering riskless lending borrowing with a suffix 3. So, these would be the points. So, you solve it and find out them. So, that will give you immediately the point q 3, because you will from based on w's you can find out immediately r bar q 3, sigma q 3 and so on and so forth. Now, let us use a different color green, you just shift R f 3 to R f 2. So, you have the point q 2 when you draw it, 
time in a, uh, anti clockwise movement so technically i should have also drawn like this just just for so this point this one you have moved anti clockwise to find it out similarly when i move to the green color second point you have also moved anti clockwise now this angle which is obvious is q2 so now i will have again a maximization problem q2 is equal to r bar q2 minus r f 2 divided by sigma q2 solve it again similar method w1 dash w1 so on and so forth i find out these these are now w12 because they are based on the fact that i am using rf2 to find it out rf2 is the risk free lending borrowing so this will give me all the combinations of the weights and based on that i can find out r bar q2 sigma q2 similarly when i come to use let me use a different color blue i come to rf1 this is q1 this is the angle theta1 when i solve it again i'll have maximization of theta1 is equal to r bar q1 minus rf1 divided by sigma q1 that will give me w1 comma 1 till w1 comma n and immediately i can find out the point q1 because i am able to find out r by q1 and sigma q1 so what does it mean it means that incremental values whether they increase or decrease from f3 doesn't matter you start changing the values of f3 to f2 rf2 i mean rf1 rf4 rf5 different values all these things will give you different values of q1 q2 q3 q4 join them the moment you join them you actually go back to the curve which i have been talking about now it becomes the one which i have drawn hypothetically that comes out clearly and obviously this lower portion would not be there so considering from the minimum variance point which i have just marked in black from the minimum variance point you will basically have the curve accordingly so you use the simple technique i am just marking and highlighting it you will have this and if you go in the dotted ones it means short selling is there so considering riskless nodding bending lending borrowing not being there but short selling being there short selling being there means that's why i have i have extended that you can find out the overall uh, frontier as we point so here what what we had discussed assume that a risk less interest rate of lending borrowing is there and using that particular interest rate we find out the corresponding optimum portfolio at each point which is q continue doing that we are till we are able to draw the entire portfolio by the dotted lines as shown now the question may immediately arise that i am considering rf1 rf2 rf3 as a riskless lending which is same yes i am doing that even if we consider different values of riskless lending and borrowing at any point of time the concept doesn't change because you want to get different values of rf and you want to have theta values optimize and find out the weights so whether you take at each instant different lending borrowing or same lending borrowing the id remains the same because you keep changing them and find out the triangles theta maximize get the weights so the idea which which i have which i have discussed when you draw it is also the case if i consider this overall set of information remain the same so here it is i maximize theta and what i am doing in which context let me make it clear yes so 
short selling disallowed and lending borrowing possible concept. So, now it is the third point, the last one which I discussed was basically short selling allowed and lending borrowing not possible, here short selling is disallowed, but lending borrowing possible. So, same thing concept, I have the curves, I will draw the, the picture. So, this is the y axis which is R returns and actually actual curve is this. So, this is R actually bar, this is sigma. Now, if short selling is not allowed, that means I cannot go beyond this, no dotted points are, are available to me. Lending borrowing possible means I have this 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 actual curve which cannot be extended. So, the triangle is this, this is theta. So, I find out the ratio of height which is here the height one which I have marked here actually is this and the base which is here is this, but the, the constant has changed because as lending borrowing um, this short selling is not allowed, the weights add up to 1 obviously and the weights do not exceed z um, negative, they are not negative values. For this we will basically have a quadratic formulation and we would not be going to details or discussing it here. So, this is the actual formulation, here you have disallowed short selling. So, disallowed short selling actually means this. and lending borrowing being allowed that means rf is there which is basically the triangle part i'll just draw i'm sorry i'm using in the flow i i should have changed the color so this is the line this is the curve this is r this is sigma and actually this is the tangent this is q, this is sigma. So, if I consider the, the height, let me use the color. So, this is r bar q minus r bar f. So, if I expand this, this would basically be the combinations based on which I find that out. Thus, we have to minimize the the combination, why this combination is expanded, you remember this is the values if you consider the principal diagonal w 1 square into sigma 1 square w 2 square into sigma 2 square so on and so forth. And the order of the diagonal element are the, the risk, uh, this covariances. And here I am assuming very simply that the returns of the portfolio which I want to ensure has to be equal to RP star value, some value which is fixed for me, which I, I the investor decides it can technically it should be greater than 0 because I want more. Weights, weights add up to 1 as it should be and already mentioned where I am putting a double tick mark, the weights are greater than 0 in between 0 and 1 because short selling is not allowed. So, with this I will end the 8th lecture, thank you very much.